Hi there, I'm Daniel Seberg with this Google Plus Politics and Elections Hangout. I'm actually in Mountain View uh, today, and joining me now is John Easley. Uh, he is a staff writer at The Hill. John, thanks for being with us. Glad to be here. And Lindsay Borma, who is a staff writer at National Journal, also contributes to CBS News, and she is currently in Washington State, where they are having a caucus tomorrow. Lindsay, thanks for being with us. Hey, thanks for having me. So, Lindsay, I want to start with you. Uh, a lot of folks are paying attention to Super Tuesday uh, coming up, of course, next week, um, and maybe overlooking the Washington State caucus. How do you think that could affect the Republican race, if at all? Well, I, I don't know that they are overlooking it. I, I covered a Santorum event here last night. I've got a Paul event here in a couple hours. Um, obviously, both of them have been known to do well in caucus states. That's sort of been their, um, you know, big gold mine. So uh, I think that's why those two are here. But, uh, you know, it's so hard. Once you get past uh, Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, and it's just sort of, you know, boom, 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 one primary after the next. It's so hard to be able to, to get everywhere. So I think it's, it's not unreasonable that, that these candidates are out, you know, Gingrich obviously in Georgia in his home state, uh, trying to, you know, make the most of that. And um, I, I don't know, you know, right now Santorum is up pretty significantly in Washington state polls. I think that that could be exactly what he needs, especially after, uh, after this Michigan thing, this Michigan decision yesterday, which he's still kind of kind of uh, smarting from, it seemed yesterday, and in, uh, in in what I uh, got from him. Yeah, right, and and uh, John, now you've you've noted that uh, Romney is uh, back on top of uh, most of the national polls that we see uh, coming in. Uh, Santorum did uh, lead for for a while there. In fact, I think he's the fifth candidate uh, to lead some national polls in the Republican field. Um, m meanwhile, we're hearing from some pundits that. Perhaps uh, a new candidate uh, could or should enter the race, like perhaps uh, Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal. Did you, do you think there's really any time left for a sixth candidate in, to lead national polls in the Republican field? Uh, well, I see Lindsay kind of smiling along, and <laughs> I don't want to guess what she's thinking, but no, it, I, I mean, I don't think so. I don't think that, uh, you know, someone like a... Uh, you know, uh, any of these rising stars like a Chris Christie or, or a Bobby Jindal at this point wants to stake all of the, uh, <laughs> you know, how far they've come politically at, at this late stage in, in what could be kind of a, a really tough uh, uh, Republican uh, general election in, in 2012. So, I mean, I don't see that. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens after Super Tuesday. It looks like Romney is, is, has picked up a good deal of momentum coming off of those the Arizona and uh, Michigan wins. I'd be interested to hear from Lindsay if she sees any uh, uh, momentum uh, from Romney in Washington. Uh, I know Santorum was leading in those polls pretty significantly, but I think I saw one out this morning that showed uh, Romney might have even taken the lead there. So uh, he's definitely, Romney's picking up some steam. Uh, Super Tuesday is starting to shape up a little bit better for him on the strength of those two wins, I think. So uh, if, if he can kind of continue this, I think at, at some point uh, the establishment will kind of start to be okay with it. You'll probably hear some of this talk about a, a white knight dissipate. <laughs> Lizzie, do you want to weigh in? Sure. Well, I, I think he is actually here right now where he was yesterday. Um, I, I can't keep up with where everybody is because they fly around so much. But, um, I, you know, obviously he's not going to hurt from this sort of uh, momentum coming in from an Arizona win, a Michigan win. So maybe that has something to do with it. And, um, you know, Santorum uh, isn't really the news anymore, so maybe that that's part of it also. And so uh, I, I definitely think that, that Romney could pull off something in Washington State. I think, um, you, you know, I, I might be I, – I don't fully – understand a lot of these caucuses, but um, I think uh, Washington State is like Maine, where it's non-binding and, um, you know, the, the delegate selection is after the straw poll, and in those situations, actually, Ron Paul tends to do really well because he has his diehard supporters that, that stay afterwards, and so I think uh, that's the message Santorum was spreading yesterday, was, um, you know, make sure you stay. This is this is what matters. Uh, obviously, we just saw in Michigan that this is what matters are, are the delegates. So uh, I think that's really what Romney's going to have to also enforce if if he does want to do well here in Washington State. All right. I guess even though it's it, or in some places it's non-binding, it doesn't stop any candidate from claiming victory over uh, <laughs> something as a win. Um, John, do you see? Uh, 
Rick Santorum staying in the race right through uh, to the convention, or at least past Super Tuesday? I, you know, I mean, I, I think so. You know, I think what Rick Santorum needs is a, is a victory in Ohio on Super Tuesday. That's kind of shaping up to be the, the critical state for him. Um, I mean, he really had an opportunity to knock down the front runner Romney in Michigan, in his home state, and really make a statement that uh, that he's kind of a viable, electable, conservative alternative to Romney, and he wasn't able to do that. Um, I mean, he performed great, but I mean, he's he needs to prove that he can win some of these states, and uh, he's kind of his whole campaign. The thing has been that he can connect with these blue collar workers in a way that Romney can't. So he's got a real chance to prove that in Ohio on Super Tuesday. And, uh, I mean, kind of another reason that that's, that's shaping up to be a big state for him is that, you know, we've seen uh, you know, Romney, Romney gains in Washington uh, recently. Uh, I think uh, Idaho actually has a, a decent Mormon population that's going to be turning out for uh, Romney there. And some other states where he's kind of uh, uh, really seen some gains. So... Uh, uh, yeah, Santorum, I think, you know, Ohio's kind of the big prize on Super Tuesday, and so if he can make a statement there, I think it'll say something about how legitimate his campaign is, and if he can't, who knows how long he'll stay in, but he's not going to, he's not going to seem very formidable if he can't, if he can't win there. Yeah, I think we've seen well, he's leading in, oh, Lindsay, go ahead. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I just was going to say, it's very obvious that Santorum has picked out these states that he wants to campaign in, you know, he's in Ohio, he spent a lot of time in Tennessee, um, I think he flew to Ohio this morning, and, uh, you know, Georgia, and this just sort of goes to show uh, the irrelevance of Newt Gingrich, but um, Santorum is, is really touting his second place in, in Georgia behind Newt Gingrich, you know, where Romney's coming in third. So I think that he has these specific states that it, it, it's going to be vital that he wins, you know, after, after pouring his chips into these, you know, three, four states uh, on Super Tuesday. Yeah, so, so Rick Santorum polling well in uh, Tennessee and Ohio. Uh, Newt Greengrich um, doing well at this point in, in Georgia seems to be a, a runaway favorite there. Uh, and, and Romney leading in some other states. Uh, Lindsay, where does this leave Ron Paul? <laughs> um, you know, Ron Paul, uh, I think at the last debate, he said the biggest misconception of me is uh, the one by the media that I can't win. And, you know, he's, he's going around and he's saying, I'm second place in terms of firm delegates. And that may be true. You know, I, I'm not sure exactly where Maine, you know, left it. Or there's still some that are being sorted out, and he points that out. But um, he hasn't won a state yet, and that's, that's very difficult to overcome at this point. But he still he draws Paul, these big crowds, you know. He, was, he got 4,000 oh, people man. at Michigan State University. Uh, he gets a lot of surge traffic. Online, we see it on Google all the time. He gets uh, a big following with his YouTube videos, but it just doesn't translate to the ballot box. How do you? How do we explain? Well, this? well, I was actually at, so I was um, in Michigan with him last week or a few days ago. I'm you know losing track of my days, but um, you know huge crowds in the thousands at almost every single one. And I think what you have to remember about this is is Ron Paul supporters are dedicated, devoted. Supporters. There are none who haven't really made up their minds yet, you know, who, who come to these Ron Paul rallies. And so I, I think that a lot of times huge turnouts in the event doesn't necessarily mean uh, a huge, you know, showing in the actual election because you've got these undecided to then go and, and they're still making up their minds. And a lot of times they don't go for Ron Paul. You know, you're sort of all or nothing. Um, with him, and, and I think that that's always important to remember. All right, well, let's uh, shift gears a little bit and talk about uh, the president. And, uh, John, you, you recently wrote a piece about the uh, Koch brothers' refusal to reveal donors to Americans for Prosperity. Um, you talked about the ongoing volley between groups associated with the Kochs uh, and President Obama's re-election campaign. Uh, uh, can you explain this a little bit, and, and have you ever seen such an exchange between a major presidential campaign and a, a well-heeled third-party group like the Koch brothers, huh? I, I mean, yeah, it's a fairly uh, unique situation, I think. And uh, so basically some background on it is the Obama campaign sent out a fundraiser uh, a week or two ago saying uh, that, you know, the Koch brothers are going to be spending hundreds of millions of dollars to unseat the president. And uh, there, was, there was two kind of uh, 
uh, unique um, allegations in there. One of them was that they're uh, jacking up oil prices, and that's that's their actual that was their uh, their terminology. And the other is that uh, uh, that they're uh, they're bankrolling Tea Party extremism. So that kind of initiated this this back and forth between uh, uh, the uh, the spokesman for Coke Industries kind of replied to that. And uh, and really debunked the whole jacking up the oil prices. I don't think anyone really thinks that that's necessarily a legitimate allegation. But the the bankrolling the uh, the Tea Party extremism is something that I think uh, the Obama campaign is kind of uh, is is trying to you know frame the Koch brothers as kind of this this giant menacing organization looking to uh, take him out. And I mean, there's no doubt about it that you know uh, the Americans for Prosperity was it was founded by the Koch brothers. Uh, it's a it's a uh, conservative um, economic nonprofit, uh, and you know whether or not they're deliberately looking to unseat the president. A lot of uh, a lot of the policies that they push are in, in direct conflict with you know with uh, with the president's campaign. So it'll be kind of an interesting dynamic going forward to see uh, whether this escalates and whether you know either side gets any benefit out of it. You know, it's kind of a uh, um, it's kind of like a boogeyman situation. On you know, on the left, you have you know people concerned about you know the Koch brothers, and you know on the right, it's the you know the Obama campaign machine. So it's I think it's really just an attempt to kind of uh, to rile the rally the bases on on both sides. Well, speaking of uh, the president, Lindsay, I want to finish up with you. He's he's seeing some some decent poll numbers these days the economy folks are cautiously optimistic looking at unemployment numbers the dow going over 13,000 know, you're out there on the campaign trail do you see the issues changing over time with the candidates responding in a different way are they not focusing on the economy so much are they really trying to steer back to social issues you know what are what are you seeing and, and, and how do you think that will change uh, in the weeks and months ahead well, I think certainly the American people have been very clear that they want the issue of this election to be the economy, and that's sort of what Mitt Romney has made his whole shtick is, is I'm a one, you know, issue candidate, and he's proud of it, and he focuses on the economy and jobs, and I think he thinks that's his best bet, you know, going up against Barack Obama. Here you've got Rick Santorum, though, who is being painted as this social, cultural warrior, and he's starting to get really mad about it. He's been saying, you know, I'm not just a social guy. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm known for my family values and my faith, but uh, look at my economic plan. Well, then, last night, he gave a speech where, you know, we're here in uh, Spokane, Washington. He gave a speech at a rally that almost didn't touch on the economy at all. And he said, there are some people who disagree with me on on my, uh, you know, on my jobs plan or, or, you know, various aspects of the economy, but they know my faith and, and they know my, my values, and that's what's going to resonate. So I think there's a little bit of, of an inconsistency there, but um, in order to really go up against Mitt Romney, I think he's going to have to focus in on the economy. And, and Romney has said that before, and he said, you know, congratulations, Rick Santorum, for finally uh, paying attention to the economy the other day when he gave an economic speech. And... Uh, you know, I, I think that that's going to be one of the big, um, you know, you, like you, you mentioned the president, and once, you know, we're starting to narrow down these candidates, and it's going to become more about going up against Barack Obama than going against each other, and they're going to have to start looking at it sort of from that perspective, and right now, you know, it's all about the economy. All right. Well, it's a big uh, week ahead. I'm sure you'll both be covering it very closely. Lindsay Bormer from the National Journal and CBS News, and John Easley from the Hill, thank you both so much for uh, hanging out with us. And folks watching, of course, you can uh, follow them on Google+.